what we have seen with US markets since the start of this week is that the markets had largely been in a consolidative tone, although we did see fresh all-time high for both the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 index. So indeed, I think a lot of this development came from the, the oil movement. So at the start of this week, we have had Saudi Arabia and Russia coming out to say that there could be a nine-month extension to the current production curb, which is a new development compared to the six months that the market had been expecting. This had sent WTI futures up to trade near the $50 per barrel level. But soon into Tuesday, we did hear from the IEA highlighting that that production curb may not be able to really go a long way in terms of curbing global supply. So in that sense, we did see crude oil prices slump once again and that had exercised a drag on US markets as well. But that said, we are seeing the, a lot of attention on US dollar. So for those trading the dollar index, we did see the index starting at 99.2 levels at the start of this week. And it's trading just above 98 levels into mid Wednesday midweek here in Asia. I think a lot of the attention have been focused on the weak data coming through from the US, but also the jitters surrounding President Donald Trump's disclosure report. And with Israel intelligence being involved, it suddenly looks to be snowballing into a bigger impact upon the US market itself. So for the rest of this week, what are some of the themes that we are going to concentrate on? I think indeed many of the top trader items are going to receive some attention here in Asia. And first and foremost, the EIA, the official Department of Energy report is due today. The market is expecting crude oil supplies to decline by about 2.7 million barrels. The API report did preempt a 900,000 900, build up, so I think that is going to create further downward pressure although we are looking forward to the 25th May meeting between OPEC next week and I think that could really be the pivot point for prices. So resistance for WTI future is seen up above $50 per barrel, but the stronger one that we are expecting is up above $51.50. So for in addition to that, for Thursday, we are also expecting some GDP data. So Japan is expected to report their first quarter GDP numbers. The market is expecting an uptick up to 0.5% quarter on quarter from 0.3% quarter on quarter. And indeed, with the sliding US dollar, we have seen dollar yen trade slip way past the 113 support. And I think any upside surprise there could actually help to stem some of this decline. So that's one item to keep on the watch for the market. But in addition to that, I think a lot of people have been trading the local indices. And I think what we have seen for the Straits Times Index on Tuesday was a surprise slide of about 1%. And indeed, for the markets, this morning's non-oil domestic export severely disappointed as well, adding on to the pressure for the index. So as what we are seeing at this moment, Friday, we could actually be expecting the GDP data coming from Singapore as well. So the final figures is expected to be revised up to 2.7% quarter on quarter from 2.5% quarter on quarter. And I think any surprise upside there could actually see a turn of event for those trading the Straits Times Index, which is the Straits, the Singapore Index, the related market here in IG.